A while back when I was getting into Kill Team, I decided on a few factions I really wanted to focus on, a big one being Legionary. I've always been a disciple of Chaos at heart, and my thought was to design them around the factions I started with. On one hand, we had the Word Bearers, red and gunmetal, heretical script carved into the very armor they wear, heavy emphasis on fire effects. On the other hand, we had the Iron Warriors, gunmetal and brass, grimed up to look ancient, occasionally marked with yellow and black chevrons. Difficult to choose, so I chose not to. Thanks to the handful of people that voted in the Twitter poll, you set me on this path to reclaim my Iron Warrior heritage. In retrospect, I am a bit sad it wasn't the word bearers, but it is what it is. Behold, the fruit of my labors. I think they came out all right. Bit expensive since I wanted to use a bunch of the Havoc bodies to make them look bulkier. Thankfully, I remembered to record this process. Now, I'm not claiming I'm anything special when it comes to painting. I tend to try to seek the easy routes to make something look interesting without a lot of effort, so I doubt you're going to learn any really advanced techniques from me. But let's take a look back and see how we got here. The start was pretty standard. Bits clipping and cleanup with some files and exactos. The key here was murdering my wallet with three boxes of Havocs on top of buying a Dark Apostle and a Warpsmith for reasons. For flair though, I used some jeweler's chain and glue to add some extra chain work to the right shoulder pads and left arms, as well as wrapped on heavy weapons. When the final builds are set, we break out the airbrush. I don't use anything fancy here. Creative Air 0.5 nozzle. We lay on some black badger Steinal res to start. Always mix your primers thoroughly. I have a vortex mixer on hand. That thing is a blessing. I end up having to use a little thinner with this and I apply at least two coats. Some people say thinner is unnecessary. Honestly, it seems different person to person. I find that the Badger Steinal Res keeps a lot of the model details, which is a huge plus. After waiting for it to dry, we move on to the color process. I believe one of the biggest steps in choosing a color scheme is figuring out a layer path to achieve your goal. When to apply what colors, what method to apply, Seeing all these steps in sequence before executing them can really help the overall process. For instance, knowing that I will be using metallic base layers, I tend to lean towards darker primers to start from. If you consider that metallic paint is basically just paint medium and fine glitter particles, it will always show what it was put on top of. The darker undercolors gives the metal a better overall feel when combined. Next up, we dip into the Vallejo colors, starting with all over gunmetal and steel. Gunmetal is a dark and dingy metallic, truly feels very iron within, iron without. We then apply a zenithal of Vallejo steel. For this, I decided to hit it from about 45 degrees top down, full rotation around the unit. The steel is a bit brighter than the gunmetal, and that will bring a little more focus to the upper parts of the unit. I want to be a little clear here. I'll let you know the brands and paints I use, but don't get caught up in that. Over time, you may come across other brands and colors that work better for your vision, and that's fine. Find what works best for you. That aside, with the metallics dry, I actually apply a layer of Citadel Nolan oil from the airbrush. Many hobbyist painters consider Nolan oil as a miracle product when it comes to giving details to metallic colors. Nolan really helps to push the colors back to the grimy level that I want in the final design. At this point, I do pack up the airbrush. We do it by hand from here. We move to one of the more fun interactions between paints. Citadel and many other brands have lines of thin paints that are built to pool in cracks and crevices while simply adjusting colors at the peaks. Using Citadel's snakebite leather contrast, we go over many of the components on the armor we want brassed. Snakebite leather sits in the brown and orange area for pigments, and since it's thin, the undercolors will play through. In this case, the undercolor is a light gray, so it won't change much of the color, but it is also metallic, which will give the contrast paint a reflective property. You have to be careful with this. If you get it on any surface you don't want covered, you may want to brush in some water on hand to try and oversaturate the surface and then wipe away with the brush. The water dilutes the paint before it finalizes itself. There might be a bit of staining, but it won't be too bad. With the brassing down, I move on to Citadel's Black Legion contrast. I find the Black Legion tends to go on fairly thick. The breaking peaks that show the undercolor through tends to only be on the very edge of the surface. I apply it to the shoulder pads and armor joints, as well as other components that I decide need the dark base usually the shells on the guns and occasionally the wires and tubing on the armor. And then comes my favorite technical paint, 
Citadel has a product called Nihilac Oxide. This is used to apply an oxidizing effect to brasses and bronzes. I find that using it with a very damp brush lets it pool in areas on the surfaces that seem more natural for oxidization. You do want to kind of guide it though. Try and only apply it to the areas where you would definitely see oxidization. Don't overly apply it either. Having it be an inconsistent effect adds to its overall quality in my opinion. As well, if the surface is extremely detailed, placing it down and then running your finger over the surface to remove it from the detail peaks can really help. Next I start up work on a neoning effect. I'm a huge fan of high saturation colors and accents on stark units like the Iron Warriors. The neon really gives the models an extra hit of life. We start the neon with a bright yellow base, usually Citadel flash kits or Army Painter Demonic Yellow. Yellow paints are notorious for needing multiple coats for full coverage, and if you overload it early you will lose some detail as it dries. So be sure to put whatever you are using on a palette and get some extra water on it. I use my wet palette for this kind of thing mostly. I apply this base to eyes and any other light sources, plasma gun coils, things I consider battery packs, and other such objects. When that dries, we apply Citadel's Tesseract Glow. This pushes the yellow up, but also puts a lime color in the recesses. It looks a lot like a yellow highlighter. With most of the overarching details done, we close in on some small things. In particular, on these models, we have small wires. I love applying offbeat colors to these. Any decent layer paint thinned down a little bit and applied to the wire components will suffice. Here I'm using bright blue, but I try and mix in mid-reds or greens, anything to add a little accent here and there. You can push this further by adding a little white to whatever color you pick and working up areas of the wire that would be hit by the most light, but most of the time I let the natural light going on in the room handle most of that. Just applying a simple layer is fine enough at this scale. Another detail on this type of unit is the Gems and Eye of Horus Sigils. A simple hit of an orange color tends to sort this out. I use Citadel's Fire Dragon Orange for this. If I decided to build this up, you would start a bit closer to red and build up to the orange, eventually dabbing a highlight dot on it. Maybe even applying Ard Coat to give it a gloss sheen. For simplicity's sake, I stick with just the simple layer of orange. We then add a little weapon bronze to a layer brush. Emphasis on a little. I don't want to cover the surface in this metallic. I just want little components of it to have hits of this color. I then apply a dry brush hit on the peak brass parts on the armor's trim to brighten up those surfaces. I then take a crack at the Iron Warrior chevrons. This detail is the lifeblood of a good Iron Warrior unit. Citadel has a basing paint that tends to work for this. It's called Averland Sunset. It's not as bright as Flash gets, but it goes on very smooth and solid, sometimes even in a single layer. Layer. Definitely suggest thinning this down with a little water as well. After this layer dries, we grab some Cassandora Yellow Shader. You want to run this around the edges of the yellow surface. Similar to Nullin Oil, it will give a bit extra detail to the surface by darkening the outer edges, but instead of the shade being black, it's orange, which plays better on the yellow surface. The next part is the most difficult for this. Applying the black diagonal lines over these surfaces tends to be both obnoxious and fulfilling at the same time. My suggestion is to pick a decent matte black color. I tend to use army painters on my wet palette to make it run a little smoother. I then take a long bristle liner brush and slowly, slowly brush guidelines across the surface. The key is to go slow with this. Messing up at this stage could undo the work you put in with the undercolors. You have to build up the line thickness to something you like and repeat the process for each line on the surface. It was one of the more difficult things I had to learn for this. You really need to get a good ratio of yellow to black on the surface to make sure the chevrons look nice when complete. We have a few more technical paints to go through. These are Chaos Space Marines, so blood and gore tends to be abundant. Again, Citadel has a technical paint called Blood for the Blood God. Applied to a sturdy Bristol dry brush and run over the blades, swords, and knives, it leaves behind a shiny visceral red across the surface. With a similar dry brush, I use the technical paint called Typhus Corrosion and apply it to the leg area around and below the knees. This technical paint dries with small particles in it, making the surface look grimy, crusty, and dirty. I also put this texture on the barrel of any flame throwers I have, making it look a little more crispy. From here the units are mostly done, so we move on to the basing. 
For most of my bases, I use Golden's Coarse Pumice Gel. I love this material. You can apply it to any thickness. You can mix it with pigment preemptively to have it start as a color you need. Using a little skill with a paint knife, you can even mold it into shapes you might want. It takes a bit to dry, more so if you add a lot. But since it dries white, you can use contrast paints on it to create any style of surface you need. I start mine up with a very dark brown contrast paint, specifically Army Painter's Speed Paint called Darkwood. This just gives it a nice brown base. What matters is what I apply next. My idea with these Iron Warriors is that they would be treading through a rusty red mud-covered planet surface. So on top of this already textured surface, I apply another texture paint, Citadel's Martian Iron Earth. This is another kind of paint that needs to dry, but when it does, it will be crackled and broken. Some of the under mud brown will show through, but I will need to reinforce this by applying another Citadel shade, Agrax Earthshade. This will push the pits and shadows back to brown. Not wanting to leave it there, I finish up the base colors with some Army Painter Dry Rust. I apply this with a sturdy Bristol dry brush. The goal is to run it over the surface and let the textures grab what it wants. For a little flair, I add some yellow tufts of miniature grass. These are from Citadel, but there are some solid choices out of places like Green Stuff World. I just like the dry yellow against the rusty brown, red, and orange of the surface. If you use this stuff, don't just rely on the adhesive material it comes with. I tend to add a little glue to that as well. And then, as I usually do, I finish the whole model off by running Army Painter Matte Black around the base's outer ring. Some people choose colors for this to pair with the rest of the base. I always use black because I'm not a heathen. Fun bonus trick. The cases I carry my team around in have a metal surface for the units to sit on. So as a method of using this to my advantage, I glue a couple thin magnets under the base. This will keep the squads in place in the box as I travel around. There are other accents that are added to specific units in this squad that I didn't record here. In cases of leather wrappings, I tend to use Citadel's Flesh Terror's red contrast paint. For scrolls, I use Army Painter's Mummy White with a layer of Skeleton Horde contrast over the top of it. These are simple all-around techniques I'll have to put together in a different video. What we just went over covers the specific base approach to the Iron Warrior color scheme I use. It's a fairly simple approach. It could be easily expanded to fit the mass painting of a full-on 40k army, which means for a simple kill team squad, it keeps the process from feeling overwhelming. Hopefully you enjoyed this look into my process. If you liked the video and are new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you're interested in more content like this, let me know in the comments below. Maybe you want to suggest some other ideas and techniques we can take a look at. There's a link to the community discord in the description. If you have some Iron Warrior, or maybe just a paint job you're proud of, we have a gallery channel on there we've been using to post images. Thanks for watching. I'm Kimmerix, and I'll see you in the next one.